Welcome in to the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Use code DNVR when you sign up for a new account. I'm your host, Rudo, joined by AJ Hayfley. As we will get into our next conversation talk, next contract conversation. We're off to a good start. It, it's hump day, man. Hump day is always a struggle. Uh, <laughs> Did you just tell on yourself? No, it's Wednesday. You just said hump day is always a struggle. Yeah, well, <laughs> always a struggle. I mean, also true. Look, it's less of a struggle if you manscape, but uh, yeah. anyway, we will talk about Philip Grubauer and the goalie situation for the Avs in just a little bit. First, a little bit of news on the day. The Avs have signed Jason Megna to a two year contract believed to be, but not necessarily officially, a two-way deal. Um, So, that happened. Sounds to me like the next Eagles captain. Yep. Certainly a veteran that will be hanging around the organization. Um, I don't think this is too big of a surprise if you know how this organization operates, particularly... At the AHL slash depth call up level, they always have a handful of vets hanging mm-hmm. around. So, you have any strong feelings about Jason Magna's Colorado tenure so far? I don't think he's earned another call up, but if you're on your 16th forward or 15th forward or whatever, he's fine. He's a serviceable player six minutes a night in the NHL level. At the AHL level, he's fine. He, he's, he'll provide production for you. Yeah, I also don't have strong feelings. Okay, good to know. It's I mean, it's like okay. I was just curious, making sure making sure that there's not like a no yeah, hidden uh, thorns like, under there, like, or something. like yeah. a hot take like yeah, lurking no. under the surface there, where it's like he's been totally screwed. The Avalanche <sighs> should have given him more time, or I guess the fire him into the sun. Yeah, he's 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 the worst NHL player of all time. <laughs> Yeah, no, okay. not the cool. no hot takes on that one. Jeez, All righty, kind of is. Yep. Um. Anyway, so yeah, that happened. Don't be surprised to see him hanging around in, in training camp. Maybe play a handful of games a year for the Avalanche if they they need injury replacements. On the surface, yep, feels like a uh, new Eagles captain. Yep. Following Mark Alt and DJ Tynan, feels like this is a natural evolution here. The two-year deal, especially, makes you think, ah, this is a guy they want to keep around down there for a little bit, so. Yep. You guys are already going off in the comments section, fighting about the expansion draft already. You guys are fired up about this thing. Yeah, I don't know who said it, but Sam Gerrard's not getting exposed. Even if EJ doesn't wave, Sam Gerrard wouldn't get exposed in the expansion draft. <clears throat> yeah, it would. you'd have to expose Taves, right? Yeah, it'd, it'd be Makar and Gerrard that get protected, for sure. So... So Boy, that, that would be a that would be a Sophie's choice. Uh, yeah, Sam Gerard or Devon Tate. <laughs> <laughs> Just based on the contract, you'd protect Gerard, basically. But and Joe Sackick's in his office. I won't do it. I won't <laughs> pack it. Well, and that's when no. you buy, buy out EJ. But you know, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. You're like, okay, it's gonna be like that, EJ. All right. Well. <laughs> um. I'll anyway, tell you how it's gonna be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now that anyway. uh, Joe Sackick is inching closer and closer to becoming the godfather. Uh, <laughs> Philip Grubauer. It's contract yeah. up at the end of this season. EJ is going to wave the NMC. It's never yeah. really been in doubt. Yeah, it's he's going to wave. Yeah. It's not a problem. Until, until it's official, it's all just talk, but that's never really been... We've been we've been operating under that as an as a fair assumption for six months. Yep. So, uh, but behind the defense, Philip Grubauer is the main topic of today. Uh, his contract expires at the end of the year. He's only making three point three three million. Safe to say he's going to get a hefty increase in pay, no matter what. But the exact number, I think, will be interesting. Because I'm looking, I'm looking up and down the comparables here, and and obviously we've mentioned 
guys like Jacob Markstrom, guys like Jordan Bennington as more recent contracts at the six million dollar mark. But yep. when you when you look around the league, and yes, I understand a couple of these were signed a few years ago, but you have Connor Hellebuck right around that six million dollar mark. Um, you have uh, Varlamov signed at five million. Granted, the Varlamov situation, he was a touch older. There's the injury issues there, so there are other factors to play into that. But I do think this is going to be the most interesting contract of the offseason for the Avs. We talked about Landy the other day. That one seems pretty straightforward. Makar, there's a couple of options with if you want to go short-term or a longer-term deal. But Grubauer is the one that I struggle to really pin down. So what's your feel for it, AJ? My my feel for it is that Colorado is in an awful spot here. Okay. Um maybe not awful, but they're in a tough they're in a tough position here. They're going to have to they're going to have to spend serious coin to keep Philip Grubauer. And Philip Grubauer did not answer the biggest question that was raised about him that's raised about any goaltender until, until they prove otherwise uh, he was on his way to doing exactly that. Yep. He was a Vesna finalist this year. He was one of the five best, easily the five best goaltenders in the regular season, despite his uh, easier workload. He was very good through the first six games of the postseason. Um, even beyond that, he was really good in, in game three. It was games four through six that you're really nervous about. Well, and, and to your point, I mean, that's it, right? The only thing Grubauer hasn't done is take a team to the conference finals or further. Mm-hmm. It, and they, look, to be honest with you, had he continued to play the way that he did and Colorado still lost, this wouldn't be a conversation. Yep. This would be an easy, you got to you got to give him the monies. Yep. But... Like, it's, that, would, that would be it. Yeah. And it's it's really tough, too, because you are dealing with a small sample size here when you're talking about a three-game stretch. Yes, it's the playoffs. Yes, it, when it, it's when it matters most. But even when you, when you look at Philip Grubauer's playoff performance beyond those three games, his playoff numbers are good. Mm-hmm. So I, I guess, as you kind of said... Uh, I think it's going to be hard for the Avs to find a discount here at the very least. Yeah, there's no there's no real discount to be had. They're going to have to pay market value for the guy to keep him. Yep. Uh, and there isn't, you just start looking at comparables, there isn't any reason that Philip Grubauer should be willing to accept less than $6 million. Yeah, I, I can't disagree. There's what, 10 goalies in the league that are making 6 million or more right now. And he's easily one of the top 10 goalies. So, well, so right now you look at the most recent, you look at the most recent deals. Okay. Jordan Bennington is obviously the most recent big time goaltender deal signed in March of this year. To six be, by a six by six. To be fair, that was a bad contract. The second it was inked. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Like, that immediately turns into that. That it immediately turns into the okay. Like, all right. So St. Louis made a mistake, but they 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 set a market price for a goaltender. Yeah, you know, you look at you look at Jacob Markstrom. He signed a six by six last off season. Who's in terms of career accomplishments, probably more in line with Grubauer in that they haven't done a whole lot in the postseason as a starting goaltender. Sure. So I can understand, like, oh, the guy, Jordan Bennington, won a Stanley Cup. Okay. It's been two years now. And you look at you look at his numbers, and then you look at his postseason numbers since the Stanley Cup. Two, two seasons in a row, sub-900 save percentage. Well... And, and even if you ignore the numbers side of it for a moment, because Jacob Markstrom did not put up particularly impressive numbers this year either. Um, and nobody in Calgary did. <laughs> sure. 
<laughs> but like an entire city just had a down year. The problem with those two deals is that they were signed when teams had knowledge that the cap was flat. So yeah. there, there is a precedent set in the current ecosystem of contracts for goaltenders worse than Philip Grubauer at the $6 million mark. Yep. And, and that's a problem for the Avs. <laughs> Well, and then you keep going down this line, and it's like, okay, well, what other what other deals might be more? Okay, well, Robin Leonard five years at five million, but Robin Leonard's their backup now, at best a tandem guy, yeah, based on and their like coverage. like his his numbers have been only extreme. It's either so, great or not so great. And part of what you pay for when you want to pay a goaltender is you want him to be consistent. Yep. And if you look at Phil Grubauer's Colorado career, okay, the three year deal that he just that he just finished. All right. Regular season, nine seventeen, nine sixteen, nine twenty two. Pretty darn solid. Can't look at any of that and say he was bad. Yep. Postseason, 925, 922, 914. And that 914 is the most recent one. And you keep in mind, it plummeted. It was a 930 before. Before game four. Game four, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, no extreme swings in his numbers. Yeah, there's nothing. Th- and has been their, st- has been their starter now consistently been their starter for the last two seasons and he went through this year entirely healthy essentially so really his only his only injury was covid yep (laughs) so the the question marks that were brought up a year ago with potential injury concerns seemed to be quelled as well. Oh, well and they were always they were always interesting because he'd never really been a guy like prone. yeah he'd, he'd suffered like little little like out for a week type thing like yeah. minor like yeah like minor injury here minor injury there but it was never it was never like oh this guy's gone for a month yep you know it was Outside in, of that one time ian cole ran into him but well and we don't even know how long he would have been because the true. world the world shut down two weeks later true but so that was that was really it. And then he like a non contact injury in the postseason in game one against Dallas, and then that was it for him. So the injury stuff I think has always been overblown. Yeah. So I think just in a vacuum, you look at contract comparables, you look at the numbers, like you can you can get into the okay, well, Jordan Bennington won a Stanley Cup, but if you look at Jordan Bennington's numbers before he signed that deal. He had the 927 and the 912 in the in the regular season. And then he was he put up a 910 this year. He was in the midst of the 910 when he signed it uh, that deal this year. Yeah. In the postseason, a 914 that won a Stanley Cup. Even in his postseason run, it was a 914. Average at best. Like a solid goaltending performance, but he gets remembered for having this crazy run and he, he it was a nine fourteen, just fine in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, uh, and then in the last two seasons in the postseason, eight fifty one, eight ninety nine, actively bad. Yeah, with goals against uh, averages over three in both of them, and he's yep. lost. In, I think nine straight playoff games. So yeah, I think that's correct. I don't think he has a playoff win since their cup win. <clears throat> so you look at that. You look at Jacob Markstrom. Again, these are six these are the six million dollar guys. Yep. Now Bennington, one of the things in his favor here is that he's just 27 years old. True. So a couple of years younger than Grubauer, so they aren't paying as much into the 30s. Grubauer at 29 uh will turn 30 at the start of next season. Kind of like what we talked about with Landis Scott. So um, you're talking Grubauer, same age as Jacob Markstrom when Jacob Markstrom signed that deal. 
yeah, I think Markstrom is probably the one to hone in on a little bit more, but we can do that in the second period as we do have to take our first period break as we are brought to you by Breckenridge Brewery, the official beer of DNVR. You can get yourself some Breckenridge Brewery seltzers, the 15 can sampler pack. Wow, absolutely delicious stuff from your local liquor store. You can also get their beers on tap down at the DNVR bar. So come check us out with that. We also brought to you by Strava Craft Croft. Strava, man, I can't talk today. Strava Craft. Get their cold brew stuff down at the DNVR bar as well, or go online and get 25% off with code DNVR25 at StravaCraftCoffee.com and get 20% off for life if you sign up for their subscription service. There you go. Code at the bottom of the screen. You can also get yourself a DNVR membership while you're around. You can get awesome shirts like this All Hail Kale shirt, uh, as well as our awesome content, masks, uh, other shirts, more stuff at the bar, including big beers. We got you covered with everything top to bottom, not just the abs, but the other Colorado sports beats as well. So check us out. If you want to support us, sign up for an annual membership to get yourself that free shirt to boot. Second period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Rudo and AJ coming at you. Uh, so. That sounds aggressive. <laughs> coming, coming, coming at, at you. <laughs> Better duck. Live in your living room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, th- the big question that's going to come up with. Every contract, when you're talking about a guy who's in his late 20s slash early 30s, is term on the contract. Jacob Markstrom got the 6 by 6 He turned 30 this year. Is it going to take term to sign Philip Grubauer? Yeah. Because if the ads won't give it to him, somebody else will. Yep. That's where you have... Look what, look what Semyon Varlamov got in the market. When he went out into the free, into free agency a couple of years ago, he wasn't even he. You want to talk about injury history? Oh, yeah. Barley had lengthy injury history. Yep, wasn't even the starter on his own team by the end of it, and he got five by five in his thirties. Yep, he's gonna get that. This I, I've seen. I've seen some people who were like, "Oh, just give him a two or three year deal." Sure. If he's Love okay that. with that, yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> How do we convince him that that's a good idea? Yeah. Is he does does he not have an agent? Is he <laughs> negotiating for himself? <laughs> because if he has an agent who is in any way functional or awake, just at all. That's not happening. Yeah. Can't allow his client to take a three-year deal. <laughs> Can't allow it. Um, just would not would not make any sense. Yeah, the Oilers would be one of the teams that would would have would, move heaven and earth to get yeah. him, basically. Yep. You kidding me? They would they would give him a six by six in a heartbeat. Yep. Like this Wouldn't is his think payday. Twice about it. Yep. This is this is what the dude has been waiting for. You know, he worked his way from backup to starter on a cup team, and then okay, now he's a starter on a on a on a good on a good hockey team. They win. He he Vesna finalist backstops the President's Trophy winning team. Blah 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 blah. But. As long as his agent is awake, he's getting he's getting a long term deal. Yeah. Uh, well, let, let me let me pose a hypothetical to you. If the the value range, the dollar range, pushed up into eight eight and a half million for a three year deal, could he be enticed? I'm not saying the Avs could or even would be capable of doing that, but it, that would come down to personal preference. Sure. Because if you're if you're Philip Grubauer and Edmonton is offering you a seven by seven, up the ante, they give you they give him seven years, yep. they're gonna give him seven million dollars. All right, they're giving him a forty nine million dollar guarantee. Yeah. All right, now Colorado's offering you three years, 
at would you say eight and a half? At eight and a half, yeah. Round it up to nine if you want easy math. So say twenty seven million for three years. You got twenty seven million. All right. Forty nine minus twenty seven. All right. You're more than halfway there, but you're always making the mistake of doing math live on air. But <laughs> you're twenty you're twenty two you're twenty two million in the hole. Yep. All right. But you have another contract to get after that. Are you gonna make What's yeah. the confidence that you're going to make up that $22 million the next four years after that? You'd still be needing to make over $5 mil for the next four you years. Will be, you will be a 33-year-old 30, goaltender yeah. with who knows what kind of career accomplishments at that point. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe none. <laughs> Maybe nothing changes. He wins nothing in Colorado. But that's the conversation. If you're, if you're that dude and you're facing that decision – if you're that if you're that guy, uh, if you're if you're Philip Gruber Grubauer's wife or girlfriend or whatever, and he's trying to make that decision, and you're like hoping to have a family with this guy, forty nine million, yeah, you twenty seven I mean, million, you're taking the long term security for sure. There's, I don't think it's that hard of a. a it's conversation, the difference between but... living in Edmonton and Colorado, twenty two million dollars. Might Let be. me ask you this. It might be. <laughs> if you had the choice, if you had to go live in Edmonton for the next seven years, but you were going to make $22 million more. Uh, I mean, compared to what I make now, yeah, obviously. But if I was already going to make $27 million. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. <laughs> you're going to make twenty. You're going to make twenty-seven million dollars for the next three years, and I that's with us being it. ultra generous here and giving Philip Grubauer nine nine million dollars. <laughs> yeah. I would not move. No, I would stay for sure. Okay, see, I would too because I'm. I always ask the question: What am I trying to buy with twenty-seven yeah. million dollars, or with? I'm sorry, with forty-nine million dollars that I can't if with twenty-seven I, million dollars. Uh, yeah, we, if it's we, a twenty-two million dollar <laughs> yacht, then I get it. <laughs> Uh, yes. But if it's not, if it's reasonable, regular human being shit, then you're fine. Your $22 million land yacht in Colorado. <laughs> what are you talking No, dude. The, the yacht's going elsewhere. You, you have an off season. <laughs> you're putting that shit in San Diego. You know, and if, you're, you're if you're buying a yacht, you're not living in Colorado. I'm sorry that you're banned from living in Colorado. If you're purchasing a $22 million yacht, you have to go live by the wherever your yacht is that's just that's just your ultimate flex play toy <laughs> that's the thing where you're like thanks edmonton <laughs> all right well i'll never own a 22 million dollar yacht i guess so it doesn't matter you know uh, what don't give up on yourself this early in life oh boy hey man I you could, could win, win the lotto someday. I, what if you yeah. win like mega millions and you're 300 million and you're just like, let's do this. I still wouldn't buy a yacht. I hate going on the ocean. <laughs> I've never done it. So I don't know that I have a feeling about it, but I imagine I would get seasick. Yeah. I, land is better. That's all I'll say about that topic. Um, See? He lives on Colfax and has a $21 million yacht. It's chill. Grant knows what's up. <laughs> All right. Well, you're under the $22 million cut, so it's fine. <laughs> oh, <geez>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, oh, getting back funny. onto the actual topic of Philip Grubauer. The, the question really does come down to a certain extent. Does he want to stay in Colorado, right? Because... The abs are going to set their limit, and I think the reality of the conversation is there's going to be teams, if Grubauer does make it to free agency, that will mm -hmm. outbid them. Yeah, well, you, this is the same thing with Landis Cog. If that guy gets to market... The abs will get outbid. Yeah, The abs, the abs will not be able to play. Yep. I think it's pretty simple in that regard. I love this idea. Use the yacht. Park it in, park it outside of the DNVR bar for yeah, when watch I'm parties saying. are too it's packed. Our, it's our land yacht. Yeah, there goes that entire back parking lot. It's just gone because our Yo, yacht is sitting it, there. If someone wants to invest twenty-two million dollars in our company, please don't buy us a yacht. 
Yeah. Please, <laughs> please, please buy us cars <laughs> to, to start with. Yeah. There's a lot, a lot of nice things we could buy with $22 million that aren't a yacht. Allie, what would you want if somebody gave us $22 million? What's the first thing you would want? If someone gave me $22 million oh, or the, gave like the, the company? The company, but like, hey, we're going to get you something that you want. For the company or for my life? For your life. A house. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But that's when you know you're getting old. Like, realistically, I would love a home. <laughs> okay. What would, would you? A- I would love a home. That was so sad. I would love a house. I would love a home. Yeah, For the company, I would want some of the dopest cameras, like, ever. The ones that are on the field, like, for some of the games and stuff. Oh, my God. The The content. $30,000 4K red cameras. Yeah. Yeah. You You know what would be cool is if we just bought, like, a neighborhood. And it was like the DMVR subdivision. <laughs> exactly the DMVR <laughs> subdivision. <laughs> and it's just like it's just like we're all like our block parties are just like it's just like DMVR employee hangouts. You just shut down the road and put up like a thirty foot blow up screen <laughs> and stuff. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> we have, do we need to start a GoFundMe for Allie? <laughs> LOL shelter would be great. <laughs> oh, God. One step away from DNVR saves homeless shelter at this Putting point. Yeah. Being old and broke, Allie. Oh, like, if God. I had that much money, I would get, uh, I would buy a house. Like, the you market buy a nice house. is rough. Like- well, and like if we had twenty two million dollars, it's like all right, how many full time employees do we have? You just buy each of us. You, you could, yeah, right about that. See, that's what I'm saying. We can buy almost a million dollar house for each of one us. One mansion each, please. <laughs> Done. <laughs> it's not even that. Like some people are like, shoot us, shoot me the Venmo. <laughs> we'll help you out. <laughs> it's like right now the market, the housing market in Denver is just so bad. Like especially in yep. this area. So it's just like, Look, I mean, guys, I got savings. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm doing okay, but it's, it's well, that bad. I, I love y'all, but your $20 super chats are not helping anybody buy a house. It's like <laughs> buying a house right now. No going to getting dope ass equipment. Yes. That's what your super chats are going to. We can split the difference between a house and a camera, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll take a car. <laughs> Like I'll take like a nice car. Like give me like a fifty-five grand kind of car, not like a twenty-two twenty-two grand like used vehicle with sixty-five thousand miles on it. You know, like give me like a brand new fifty-five k kind of vehicle. There's yeah. gotta be it's gotta be some land here that we can take For up sure. between. I guess um, house and cameras. <laughs> That's where my brain's at. Um, some like really nice golf clubs. I just invested in like some irons, but not the other stuff. I guess that's what I'm doing right now. That that's like what I can think of. <laughs> I don't that's know, true. guys. I need new clubs too. <laughs> I wish I made more money. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sasha, for the five dollars for Ryan and I's house fund. I appreciate it. Happy belated oh. birthday, by the way, Sasha. <laughs> Got to start yes. somewhere. <laughs> Thank you, Super Chat. <laughs> All right, so only like nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred and seventy five more dollars to go. Chat, you're basically there. <laughs> you yeah, got to exactly. This is going to that as well. <laughs> Yo, I'm oh. I'm just trying to get in something functional. My car, my car has been a very loyal soldier for sixteen years. Yeah, I want AJ to get a car that's a little more safe. Yeah, I'm ready to go. I'm ready for it. <laughs> Oh goodness! Thanks for the last chat. Yeah. Anyway, um, trying to get Philip Grubauer into a new house. Yeah. Well, I mean, is that like you're talking about getting a safer car? Is Grubauer not the safe option for the Evs? Uh, well, and I think this is the smart play here because look how long it took Philip Grubauer to get comfortable in Colorado. Yep. It it took him about a year and a half. Most of that first season was all over the place for yeah. sure. Because he went from the extremes where he was not good at all to begin with, and then he was incredibly good at the end. 
but it was too short of a of a time where you were just like ah. And then the next year, he was he was okay through the first part of the season. And because you remember, we were having conversations about Pavel Francouz as potentially like, the starter, yeah, like like taking his job. Yep. And part of that was because Frankie was awesome. Frankie played great and deserved that kind of conversation. His play warranted that, which is something we kind of forget about because we haven't seen Frankie play well in a very long time because of the injuries and stuff. But we we were having that conversation, and it's a good reminder of like, hey. This can take time for guys to adjust. You look at big name goalies changing teams. Jacob Markstrom, how did it go? Not so hot, so. Yeah, you know, 904 in Calgary this year. Yeah. Robin Leonard was great after the deadline and lost his job this year. Now, like Flurry was unbelievable, right? Like Flurry was amazing. Out of his mind for sure. But you also look at the year that Robin Leonard had, he had a 913. Solid. Nothing special. But again, not the starter there. So, and then, you know, his one postseason appearance, the Avs absolutely decimated him. Yep. And so it's, I, it, I'm making, the point that I'm trying to make here is that just because you go to Cap Friendly and you pull up UFAs and you see that some guy you had never heard of before this season named Chris Dreger at age 27 put up a 927 save percentage, and a 207 goals against average behind a Florida defense that was missing Aaron Ekblad. Doesn't, you don't, it doesn't mean you go out there and you give that guy your starting job because, again, what happened in the postseason? That dude lost his job well, to Spencer right. Knight. You have, there's, it's so hard to find sustainability at the goaltending position. It, it's just – it's the most fluctuating position – the most chaotic position in the sport. It's the most, it is the most volatile position in all of professional sports because goaltenders have great years and down years for no reason. Uh, the Rockies bullpen might want a word, but yes. I mean, relievers in baseball absolutely are the other thing that you can be like, who knows? Yep. You just had you just don't know what's about to happen, especially Colorado relievers. But <laughs> goaltenders will just do stuff. Yep. My favorite example of this is another guy that we're talking about as a contract comparable in Martin Jones. Martin Jones signed signed the contract that he is on is a six year deal that pays him five point seven five. When he, he signed was, that contract, it looked decent. Yeah. When he signed that contract, he was coming off of three years where in the regular season he had a 918, a 912, and a 915 save percentage. All right about the league average. League average, yeah. maybe, maybe a tick above average, depending on the season for a sure. starting goaltender. Yep. In the postseason, a 923, a 935, a 928 save percentage. Very good. You're looking at that. If you're San Jose, you're like, look, this is easy. His age 29 season, Martin Jones falls apart. No reason. Doesn't does not seem to, to, to make any sense. Falls apart. His age 29 season. Puts up an 896. Puts up an 898 in the postseason. What the hell? Just fell off a cliff, man. Three years in a row, 896 and, in and the this, regular season. And it's not Martin Jones is 30. This year, it's not like he aged out. So he was in the prime of his career and just cratered for no reason because that's goaltending. You're looking at his age 29 season, Martin Jones falls apart. How old is Phil Grubauer? 28. I 29. Think. Did he turn 29? Okay, yeah, he's he turns 30 in November, so he turns 30 a month into the next regular season. Coming off of three straight years in which he was rock solid for the Avalanche, so I mean, you're, you you have the Martin Jones fear. What happens? You, you do, but on the flip side, you have goalies like Mike Smith who put up a nine twenty three at age thirty eight this year. Yeah, and that's Another why it's so hard to to pick a goaltender 
Um, well, and if you look at the free agent market, you know, you do have, okay, well, maybe Chris Dreger could be a legit yeah, starter. Hold, hold now, that thought. I, I do want to get into the conversation of other options, but we do have to take our second period break here. Uh, first of all, thank you for the super sticker, our moisters. Super sticker. It, it was a pair like lifting weights that said, keep it up. But if, uh, if you want to try and make the ladies moister in the bedroom. No, 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 no. <laughs> And, and you know, took one of English's most uncomfortable words to say, butchered it, and applied it to randomness. <laughs> and, you know, the super sticker is accurate, too. Maybe it'll help you keep it up if you get some Manscaped, all right? So head on over to manscaped.com. Use code DNVR to get 20% off and free shipping. You can also get their Perfect Package 4.0, which includes the new Lawnmower 4.0 for the trimming. They have the Crop Preserver. They have the deodorant. They have the toner. They have breath mints. They have shave mats. They have razors, even. You name it. They got whatever you need. So, you know. Nice. Moist Scape. That's what's up. That was it. That's the one right there. <laughs> Moist Scape. <laughs> yeah. What was that? What was that game that we were playing before we went live, Alley? Name the female products. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, guess uh, female products. Guy yeah. at the DMVR office. Guess female products. Next. Next time, I'm guessing all of the products that you show me. I'm guessing are going to be the Moist Scape. No. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This is true, Drew. The only thing that makes Allie cringe more than Denver house prices is Rudo's Manscaped reads. Correct. There you go. Manscaped reads worth $22 million confirmed. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I'm disappointed we did not turn the housing conversation into a Chevalier mortgage. Uh, oh, man. Lead in. That would have been great. <laughs> yep. Yeah. No Chevalier today. We are brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook, though, the number one rated <laughs> sportsbook app out there. Hump Day Tale confirmed. If you want to improve your hump day, make a little bit of money, head on over to DraftKings Sportsbook. You can sign up with a new account with code DNVR and bet $1 to win a $100 in site <laughs> credits. All you have to do is bet on a basketball team still in the running. If they win their next game, you win 100 bucks in site credits. Jump on it today. They, of course, have amazing odd boosts on all of the other sports as well, whether it be baseball, hockey, football, rugby, esports, other craziness. You can bet on it at DraftKings Sportsbook. Do it. Get over there. Sign up with that DNVR code. So let them know we sent you. Must be 21 or older. Colorado only. Other terms, restrictions, and conditions apply. Download the top red DraftKings Sportsbook app now and bet on a basketball team of your choice to turn $1 into $100 in site credits for a limited time only. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem call 1-800-522-4700. Third period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Also be sure to like and subscribe to the video and so the YouTube channel. That helps us out a ton when you guys do that. I still see uh, still see some new faces in here as we enter into the off season. So we appreciate all of y'all. Um Still love all the people who have been here all year. You guys are of also course. great. Y'all are dudes and ladies. All right. Yeah, don't mean to assume genders, of course. I, without getting you into a conversation. You guys are great people. I don't want to get into, yeah, y'all is the way to go. I get yelled at for saying y'all. They're like, you're not from the South. Don't say y'all. I just like the word y'all. Tell them, tell them to shut up. It's then. the easiest gender neutral term for a group of people <laughs> ever. Y'all is the best. Yeah. I have been trying to watch um, Euro, but it's, you know, early Tough in the hours. morning. Yeah. <laughs> 7 a.m. is rough. Now, if it's, you know, if it's in South Korea and it's it's 4 o'clock in the morning, yeah. I, can, I can do that all day, baby. 7 a.m. is bedtime. Yeah, but 7 a.m. I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> kill me. That's in between hours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> ah. um, I would like to chat's opinion on the TDSP topic for this week. Um, someone asked, two on each team will make the best GM, coach, broadcaster, horse trainer, after retirement, one player for each category. All right, well, horse <laughs> trainer's easy. I'm excited. That will be tomorrow, and one of these two gentlemen will be on there. So 
Hope you like it. Give your opinions in the chat, and I'll bring it up in tomorrow's TDSP. Hmm. Bye. There you go. TDSP popping off. Uh, so, <laughs> let me start by phrasing it this way. Is option one, in fact, keeping Philip Grubauer for Colorado? Yeah. That's plan A? I think that's got to be plan A, um, for sure. It's so much easier to just be like, run this back. We'll try really, really hard to talk him into a five-year <laughs> five year deal. Yeah. Look, if it's five years, are you happy? Yeah, totally. That's fine. If it's seven years, are you happy? I think I'm okay with it because I think the Avs win a cup somewhere along that way, but those last couple of years might get dicey. Let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. If he signs for seven, yep. and this is just a hypothetical, obviously. Sure, sure. What if the abs, if the abs, let's say the abs win two Stanley Cups with Philip Grubauer in net, mm -hmm. and he finishes out that seven years yep, and just retires. No, nothing sure. after that. He just sure. goes, I made my 49 million. Now I can go live in Edmonton for fun, I guess. <laughs> what, whatever he can do whatever with his 49 million um does his number get retired i mean you have to look at the accumulation of stats a little bit over the because four, seven years but at, well at the end of that time he will have been in colorado for 10 years right. and had two stanley cups i mean at that point he's easily the second best goalie in colorado history right cool um, so that's so, all it takes. Play for the Avs for 10 years and win two Stanley Cups, baby. Name retired. Easy. Jersey retirement ceremony. Golly, we make the world easy. Not difficult. All right. Everybody wants to act like the universe is so complicated. It's, it's real easy. When, um, we put it like this. It's, it's, it's cakewalk. Yeah, the Avs need to start uh, They need to start world hunting, right? Their retired jerseys are basically just a bunch of Canadians in Forsberg. Wow, a bunch of Canadians in Forsberg. That's yep. what that's what they should call the documentary that they make about the 2001 team. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying, like down the line, if you put Grubauer on there, you get Germany. Miko can give you Finland. McKinnon and McCarr Canada too. But you know, what can you do? I, I guess do they have all the provinces? They need to they need to fill fill out the rest of the Canadian provinces because they have Quebec. Sackick, what? Where was Sackick born? I guess, or do you count him as where he played juniors? I guess that's a hard question to answer. Anyway, this is not the topic we're we're supposed to be talking about today. This is a super August conversation. Yeah, very, very much so. Uh, Hayduke is Czech. That's true. I forgot they retired Hayduke's number. I'm not gonna look. We're not going to call it a bunch of Canadians and Peter Forsberg and Milan Hayduke. Yeah, you can't. All can't right. Do that. Milan Hayduk is just going to be, he's going to be faux Canadian for the purpose of this conversation. <laughs> God. In any case, keeping Philip Grubauer is plan A, but with the realities that the Evs might not be able to do that, especially depending on what Landy, what Makar's contracts look like. Mm -hmm. They want to do something crazy, like try and bring back Brandon Saad. <laughs> something crazy. <laughs> what What are your plan B's? Well, I think then you have to um, you have to ask UC to evaluate all the available goaltenders. Yep. Um, you look at the expansion lists. Look at the guys that are unprotected. I hate. I mean, I'm I'm not doing this for the meme, but you know that there are teams out there that are going to have to expose a goaltender that they don't really want to lose. Yep. And one of those teams is going to be Washington. Go back to the well, baby. Yeah, between between Samsonov and uh, Vitek Vanacek, uh, one of those guys is going to get exposed. So, you know, have that conversation. Free agency, there are a myriad of mediocre options in free agency. We talked about Chris Dreger. Uh, if you wanted a, a true Band-Aid, like one-year stopgap, stop you have the Mike Smith conversation. And then the only other, like, intriguing options that are out there Maybe maybe Mrazek, if he gets to market and he's healthy. Um, Brossois has done a really good job as Hellebuck's backup in Winnipeg behind some not very good defenses. That would be your classic like two- or three-year deal at about $3 million 
where you just try to elevate a guy from backup to starter status. Linus Olmark is another guy um, that is set to be a free agent. Um, obviously, as Colorado, as this process plays out, if Grubauer gets to market, other guys will be re-signing as well. So we'll see we'll see what happens um, with that. And yeah, the Islanders with Varley are, is going to be a conversation because um, the uh, uh, Ilya Sorokin, while he's exempt from the expansion draft, um, they have to pay him. And we saw that they had they had money problems last year. So those money problems haven't gone away. They still exist. They're still going to be right up against the cap. And Sorokin looks like the guy moving forward there who's going to be able to ask for at least a, a, a couple million dollar raise, if not a long term deal. So I think that you would you would make a call on Varley too. You would not only call Washington, but you would call on Varley. Has Freddie Anderson played his way out of the conversation, giving his weak play and injuries this year? Um, I think Freddie Anderson has played his way into it would make a lot of sense if he ended up as like plan C and he's looking at if you're Freddie Anderson and you're like, how can I rebuild my value? I'm going to I could either go to a bad team like he could end up in Arizona for a year, yeah, you know, and for him for a while. Exactly. And, and see how that goes. Or Freddie Anderson, you know, Freddie Anderson on a one year deal in Colorado to try and rebuild his value and then go back into free agency again. Maybe that's the smart play for him. And if, if he's trying to get, you know, a longer term contract instead of a two year deal, you know, maybe. And, and again, that's where Edmonton would come into play. Where where would Freddie Anderson want to go? He's going to be an intriguing name, uh, given that he's he's been good in his career, not good enough to get teams over the their respective humps, but could be could be an interesting guy, like a talented guy with upside. Where you're also like, okay, if he gets hurt, we, we could be in real trouble here. As chat has kind of started to shift to here the impacts of Philip Grubauer returning or not do have a wider impact at the goalie position than just a potential starter with people asking, do the Avs re-sign Jojo or is there any chance of the Avs giving Pavel Francois a look at the starter position? I, I How could you though? I don't think you could either. Like if, that... if this was a year ago and none of the injuries had happened for Frankie, Maybe, like, maybe you could have that conversation totally, but no. At this point, after he missed the entire postseason with injuries and then has double hip surgery to get to to get himself right, no, you cannot. You cannot. You, just you cannot just be after. like, yeah. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna turn the this over to this guy. Absolutely not. So you don't do that. No. Darcy, Darcy Kemper, you guys think that Varley was injury prone? Go get Darcy Kemper and see what happens. Um, look, if Anaheim wants to trade John Gibson, I'm always in the market to unload look, for him. But John, John Gibson right now making six point four million dollars and has six years left on his deal at age twenty six. He's twenty. He just he's turning uh, twenty eight next. All right, next so month. A, a touch older, but still right in the middle of his prime. Yeah, yeah. and his last two seasons, nine oh three and a nine oh four. It's so, been down, but also he's playing behind Anaheim. Know what you're know what you're buying. If you want to go all in on John Gibson and start giving up a ton of shit, you're doing it for a guy that has not significantly been any better than Jonathan Quick the last couple of years. There's context there, but there is, but I'm saying we've seen, we've seen great goaltenders on bad teams before, and I'm not totally here for the whole, well, well it was a bad team. I mean, what, uh, what can he do? For, well, what can he do about it? Here's, here's an interesting conversation though. Just give Philip Grubauer what John Gibson is making. If you want to go get John Gibson so badly. Six years at six point four. Yeah, I think both sides would do that today. And, and you have, if you're okay with getting John Gibson, 
would you not have to be okay with giving Philip Grubauer that contract? Yeah. Because they're well, Philip, and Grubauer's a year older, I guess. Philip Grubauer is as of and he's essentially two years older. Sure. There's Gibson obviously has the pedigree, but their performances over the last three seasons, Grubauer has been better. Yeah, I mean he's outplayed him by a significant margin. It's not even close. So yeah, Tuka Rask isn't going anywhere. We're not talking about Eustace Annanen because he's not he won't be ready unless something he's, crazy happens. He's played yeah. three North American games. You have to give that guy time. Unless he's the, not he's not even in the conversation yeah. for backup next year. Unless the dude rolls into the AHL in like post six straight shutouts or something. <laughs> like you're not well, talking, and, and then he has to follow that up. Like right. you, you're you need to see consistency from that guy. It needs to be a mastery of a level before you start talking about promoting you're, him. You're yeah, it's just you're hoping that Adam Werner can be your third stringer next year, basically. Or, or whatever, go, whoever, or whoever they, they go, decide. They go get someone they, to be the third stringer, sure. They whatever. have a they have a ton of decisions to make at goaltender. Yep. So Annan and Annan and if Annan's five years out, something it he's not that way, far out. It took way too long. I, I'd say two years out, maybe I, three. I, realistically, I want to see what he does this year first and then go from there. Like he has two years left on his ELC. Let yep. him finish his ELC and then we'll see. We'll, yep. we'll see how things and go. You make decisions based on his AHL performance. I think. Yep. But Tuka Rask said Boston or nowhere. So we don't need to talk about Tuka Rask anymore. Yep. It's not super relevant to the conversation. And yep. also he's too expensive anyway for the Avs. But again, well, I mean, that would be a like realist, like if he got retained half actually, or something, yeah. If he actually got to market, that would be fun, but it's not going to matter. Yeah, I, he's not interested. I, uh, yeah, uh, again, right now, plan A is the Avs find a way to keep Philip Grubauer. Yep, those are the that's the easy option. Um, but and then you're because if you're not, then you're going into free agency. And you're talking about Chris Dreger and Mrazek and Brassois and Olmark and John Bernier, anti-Ranta. Like you're talking about all these guys with serious red flag yeah. spot marks all over them. Every, every single one of them has a flaw that you're apprehensive about. So that and that's the trick with the goaltender position, especially when you have someone like Philip Grubauer. It's really hard to get better at that position. Forget affordability, just in general. It's going to be tough to do better than Philip Grubauer in that. Yep. So you just have to you just have to pay him really, unless he like really wants to get market to the market. Yep. And then yeah, look, if you wanna if you wanna talk to CBJ about Merz Leakins or Corpusalo, you're not in a good position. Yep. My team can be ten percent over the cap in the offseason. It's just shy of ninety million. Yeah. So, so there's some wiggle room there, but yep. It, it as soon as free agency hits, the Avs are shitting like a bajillion dollars. So it's whatever. Yeah. In any case, uh, goaltending position uh, starts with Grubauer. They have to make yeah. the Grubauer decision yep. first. There are plenty of decisions to be made there, but number one is figure out the starter and. The simplest path is for it to continue being Philip Grubauer. I think that's the path that makes the most sense. Yep. If they decide to do something else, decisions get more complicated and there's more work to do. Realistically, how many upgrades, how many, how many players, how many goaltenders in the NHL right now can you comfortably say this guy is absolutely an upgrade on Phil Grubauer? Not many. And of I those guys, don't know if I could even name five, like honestly. Okay, well, I was gonna say he's probably like the somewhere between the eighth and twelfth best goaltender in the NHL. I think you're doing him a little bit of a disservice even putting him that low. But so right, right, somewhere in there. Okay, even if we put him at twelve, sure. Of the eleven guys in front of him, how many are available? Maybe one or two. Maybe. And and that's without us actually making the list, because when yep. teams get those guys, they keep them. Yep. And and just to jump off of that, 
the dudes that are going to be an improvement on Philip Grubauer that are available are either already getting paid more than him or are about to be getting paid more than him. Yep. So it's not like that solves your money problem either. So we'll see. I I really think the simple answer here is the Avs just do what they have to do to keep Grubauer unless he wants obscene amounts of money. Yep. But only time will tell when the Avs have to make that decision. So I guess we're pretty much wrapping up for this goaltender, uh, goaltender Grubauer contract talk here. Um, any final thoughts on the goalie position in general, AJ? I'm always nervous about talking about it because no conversation makes you look dumber than expressing any confidence whatsoever in a goalie. Yep. That's uh it's the one guarantee that you have is that eventually goalies will make you feel bad. Yep, it's uh goalies are voodoo. What else can you say? <laughs> yeah. Until we have uh somebody like Jeremy back on the show to to tell us otherwise, but yeah, you know what? what even then, do? even then, again, I'm... like decisions on JoJo, second, third goaltenders, whatever, will come after you s- figure out the starting spot. Like, yeah, it's a it rolls downhill. But yep. we're gonna get out of here for today. Thank you, everyone watching, listening, however you consume the podcast. We appreciate all of y'all. We will be back tomorrow, normal time, 1 p.m. ish, to probably continue conversations of contract talks, but who knows? Maybe we'll get into some other things. Yeah, there are other things for us to talk about tomorrow. Do we want to take a day off from the abs and talk about the league? Yeah, we we could take a look at the conference finals. Oh, I don't want to do that. Okay, we could look at other teams' off seasons as well. Don't care about the conference finals. No, Joe Sackick doesn't do a season-ending news conference anymore. The Avs are the only team in the league that just say, fuck it, and don't do anything. Historically, they release an interview on the golf course with him in, like, the middle of the offseason. Yeah, but they don't. About it. Yeah. They don't. Oh, I didn't even think about it. That was not a shot at Dater. <laughs> didn't even think about it. It only just now occurred to me, but... That was not me making fun of him, just for the record. Uh, the abs, <laughs> the abs, the abs do not do locker clean out end of year stuff anymore. They never they have it for the last, yeah. They, they so the last couple, so my first four years on the beat, they did an end of season thing with Sackick only, but not and, the players, and then the last yeah. two, the last two years, it's been nothing. The season ended in the playoffs, and they just said, We're out, baby. Yeah. The, so um, taking an advantage of that situation, certainly. But yeah. in any case, different conversation for a different time. Thank you again, everybody. And we will talk to you all. Thanks for the house fund. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And we'll talk to you tomorrow.